hope you have all your paints out and your brushes. Um, I'm super excited to be here. So I know a lot of you have already commented on where you're coming from. I think that's great. That's super exciting. Um, so hello to all of you. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about this. This is, if you don't know, um, this is actually my first like original piece that we're um, that we're doing. So I can't wait to share with you. Um, yeah, so normally I would just pick something off of the internet or something that um, you, the viewer, would send to me to paint. And I was just struggling internally with like teaching other people's work. And so I wanted to branch out and be able to be able to teach my work. And um, that's really cool. So it's a really exciting thing for me. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being here. I wanted to go over a few things. A few things have moved around. So starting with this video, um, this after 48 hours-ish, um, this video will be moved to YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, um, over, wait, over there, <laughs> the link tree slash Samantha Anderson Artist is where you'll find all my links to my Facebook, my Instagram, Twitch, um, and a couple others, and Patreon, um, and and then my YouTube. So subscribe there, hit the bell notification. I will be posting other videos than just my um, my classes, but on the Wednesday following the class, that's where all my um, all my videos will be going to. Um, I currently up there have a speed video, actually of this painting that I did, and then I also have. A review video for the brush kit that we're going to be using. So now for all my classes, um, I have a new brush kit that I bought um, because I wanted to I wanted to buy these before I offered them to you, um, so that I could review kind of the quality of them. And I think they're great. So I will leave the link in the description of this on YouTube once it goes there. And you, if you wanted to buy that, you can. For this class specifically, uh, some of you have bought the, um, this, I don't know, Oop, this is really, there we go, there we go, um, it was all blurry. So we have this, um, you won't need all five of these palette knives, um, but if you did buy it, that's really great, we'll be able to use these for other classes, um, and specifically in this kit you'll be able to, let's see, these are probably the ones that you'll need. Um, just the, this is the, this is the normal size, the regular size, and then this is kind of a smaller one in case you need to use the smaller, um, get in the small crevices. If you bought the, uh, the brush kit, it does come with a sponge and, like, the standard size palette, um, the palette knife. So if you did have that, then you'll already have this one, which is what I will mainly be using for this one. I might use the smaller one. Um, for a couple things, but this is the main one that I will be using. Um, I'm just looking to see if I have any questions. Okay, um, before we get started, I did want to give a small shout out to my patrons. I launched my Patreon, um, my Patreon on October 1st, so it's been a couple weeks and I already have a few lovely people on there. Um, I am going to be doing the monthly art giveaway for my patrons right now. So let me just, um, let me get the names and go. Let's see, we'll see who wins this art. And it's Janet, yay! Okay, so Janet, um, send me a message and I will get you your prize. So uh, this month's art giveaway, you can choose from either a 12 color acrylic paint set, a paintbrush kit that I've already um, talked about, or the 24 sheet canvas paper pad. So that will be available to you. So just send me a message and let me know, um, or I can send you a message and then we'll swap info and I'll get that sent to you. So yay, congratulations, Janet. Okay, that's kind of all of the announcements for tonight. Um, for your palette, I am just using a paper plate. Uh, this is probably the easiest thing. Um, you can use a paper plate or you can use a, a normal ceramic plate too. Um, 
but I like to throw them away and not have to worry about cleaning them. So, you know, whatever toots your boat. Okay, um, so I will be using this. And this is so that I have room to grab the paint with my palette knife. If I have my normal round palette with, you know, the, the pots in it, it's really hard to get that in there. So if you have one of those, I would suggest going and just getting a regular plate that's got a, a nice flat area. Um, and a lot of this, we're going to be, a lot of the colors we're going to be mixing on the canvas anyways. So you really don't need the pots right now, okay? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that. I'm using a 11 by 14 canvas. Uh, it's a stretch canvas, so I have, you know, top, side, bottom. Um, that I'll need to paint. So depending on your canvas that you are using, um, you may or may not have sides. If you don't want to deal with the sides, um, you can always tape them off. You can, um, which is which is really great. <laughs> but you can tape them off, um, or you can, at the end, you don't have to worry about going on the sides, and you can just paint it black. Um, but for this specific one, the whole like background is going to be black. So you really don't have to worry about that right now. So it's just going to be pretty much the whole thing a spot because the owl pretty much sits right in this little section. So the only part that you'll have to worry about painting that's not black is the underside. So and that's if you have a stretch canvas. If you have like a panel, then you don't even have to worry about the sides. Um, or if you're doing this on the paper, then just tape and then you, there you go. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? Let me know. Um, more often than not, if, I, if you have a question, someone else might have the same question. So speak up. Um, in, in a normal class, I would walk around and see, your, see all your paintings and help you and all of that sorts, but here I can't do that. So if you're falling behind a little bit, or you need more time with something, or you have a question, please, please, please speak up, because I won't know unless you comment below, okay? So that's the number one. Um, and if you're re-watching this on YouTube or anything like that, you can still comment. Um, I might be online and I might get to it, you never know. Um, so still, I'm still gonna encourage you to comment even if you're not watching this live. But yeah, I think that's, that's it, that's kind of my spiel. Um, I think the last thing I want to go over is if you're not using uh, like the full body acrylics, which are thicker, if you're using like the craft paints that come in the little bottles, um, you won't have to add water to make it creamy. It, it's already kind of in that creaminess. Uh, so when I say to add water to something, um, just keep in mind that your, your paints might already be that consistency. So there's that. Um, okay, so from this uh, brush kit, I'm going to be using the biggest brush for this because I'm just going to be covering um, the whole background. But before we do that, I'm going to get the smallest brush I have, which is, I think this is a two round. So it's just my small liner, um, or not my liner, just my small round brush. We're going to go ahead and sketch in our owl, okay? So the first thing you need to do is put paint on your palette because I didn't I didn't do that yet um, so let's go ahead and get I'm just gonna put my block on there now I'm used to putting only the paint on there that I need because the last two times that I've painted it's been outside and so everything has <laughs> been drying really fast so I've tried to not put paint on my palette before I need it um, you asked, uh, this size is a two. Um, so I'm using a two round brush. It's just a small, you can use a liner if you want. It's just a small round brush. We're just going to kind of sketch out very loosely the details so that we know where to put our black and where to put our other colors. Um, bear in mind that if you don't have this exact kit, all, there's not like an industry, industry standard for brush sizes and, and all that. Um, so let's say it's a two here, but you have a different brand, your two might look different than mine. So just grab whatever small round brush you have um, and we'll go from there. It's really just to sketch in the details. Now we don't really have to worry about being too precise with this because um, we'll be adding a lot of details on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some water and just put just put some 
water in this and I'm gonna I'm going to water it down a little bit if you're using the craft paint you'll still need to do this just so that you know when you when you use it you want it to be very thin so that you know you're not clumping on paint that you're gonna have to go over later now granted if you know we are gonna go over it with some pretty thick paint but um, just so that it doesn't have to be majorly thick um, and then just to make it a little bit um, lighter I am going to add a tiny bit of white to it this is just so I'm, I'm not putting straight black on it so again here's my palette you can't even see the white that I just put on there I'm just adding some white to this so I'm so my my coloring is going to be gray and not pitch black Honestly, you can use whatever color you want. Most of the time I use yellow because it's really low and like pigment, it's really bright. But for the colors that we're using on this, the black and the gray will, it'll mix in better. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. Um, so just looking at the picture, we have the head is a little bit over to the left, okay? The ears go up to the top, and then in the bottom, the bottom, it comes almost all the way to the edge, but not quite. There's still some room, you know, for the black. So I'm just going to do a little mark right here. Let me move this back just a tad so you can see my whole thing. There we go. There you go. That's better. Okay. So it goes almost all the way to the side. And then this is the same thing. It goes almost to the side. But this is going in a different angle than this one. So we're just going to go for the outline. The ear is about, you know, about right there. I'm just going to gently put my line. It can be a straight line. It can be a fluffy line. Um, I'm just drawing it in. Now I'll notice that this comes out, and I think I want it to go in a little bit more. So I'm just going to redraw this line right here. And remember, this is going to be all covered with black, okay? So don't worry about that. And don't worry about doing the feathers just right. Um, the canvas, for me, is horizontal. You could do this vertical. Um, you'll have more, like, of the body to paint, depending on where you put the owl. Um, but you'll have less on the sides. Um, so you'll have less room, and you might, like... On the bottom here you might go over the edge so just kind of account you don't want to put the same proportions that we're putting on the on the vertical on the horizontal one that you would at the other um, at the portrait version because then it'll end up being a really skinny owl which theoretically there are skinny owls so that's fine um, but yeah we're I'm doing mine horizontal so long ways All right, so I have my little, I'm just going to darken the line that I want. And then I have my little, my little ear. The ear is kind of coming. And you're just going to gently kind of block in your owl. Again, these lines don't have to be perfect. We're going to go over all of them. Let's see. Let me look at that. See how I like it. I'm going to have these come in just to see the lines. Can you see what I'm doing on there? Okay. Okay, so now that I, you know, I like the shape, don't worry about the actual edges being straight because um, we're going to come in. So after we do the black, we're going to paint kind of the inside solid ish colors. Um, when we start doing the palette knife, we'll come in with black and kind of break up those lines. So trust the process. Don't be perfect. It's okay. Okay. And if you mess up, there's a Go with it. It's an abstract owl, okay? All right, so I have this 
ish. I like this. I'm noticing that these two lines don't match up. If that makes sense, they're almost straight across. So this line comes over, and I'm just going to continue that line. Does that make sense? So you kind of want this head to have a continuous line through it. Um, yeah. Okay, so now that I have a general outline, I'm going to start putting in the features, okay? So you'll notice this V that comes down and almost right, directly right to the nose. So in the middle of this here, this is about eh, the middle, we're going to have, we're going to come down just a little bit, maybe make the face a little bit more elongated. Um, we're going to have it come here, okay? So now that I know that that's kind of where I want my nose or my beak, going to gently kind of put this in there and just lock it in a little bit. Is that where I want it? Meh. I think I want it a little bit lower. Maybe a little bigger. See how I'm putting it in and then I'm looking at it and seeing how I like it and then I'm changing it. This stage is the perfect stage to do that. Once you start putting in some of the other colors, it gets harder to change, you know, the, the basic shape of things. So this is the step where you get to really choose your own inventor and choose your own um, shapes of this owl, okay? So I'm going to have this come up. This is the basic shape. That's fine. I like that. So then on either side, you're going to have these eyes. And I'm just going to do two... Two kind of uh, rainbows that are they're starting more straight up and then they curve out and it looks like mine I'm kind of thinking that they're too close together so I'm gonna move them and again this is the sage that you get to so you, you get to do this you get to kind of choose Theoretically, you could do this with the pencil and then erase the lines. You could do that if you wanted to, but. And then you're just going to connect these, um, this line to kind of the inside of the eyes. So there's black feathers going up all here through the eyes. All right. I'm going to continue with the eyes. Let's see. All right, so what I did is, because I had two lines, I, it, I was having troubles like seeing the picture, so I just kind of put white a little bit on this one, just so I could see the lines better of what I was actually going to paint. Let's see. I think I like that. And you'll notice, you'll notice even me painting my own painting twice, it's going to look different. So don't get frustrated if you're painting and it doesn't look exactly the same. Like that's okay. Uh, when I was at, when I was originally painting this, I didn't start to like my painting until I got to the palette knife section, um, a little bit into the palette knife section. So don't get frustrated. Just trust the process. I promise it'll look good and it'll be fun. So that's why we're here. We're here to have fun. Um, yeah. So once you got this, I mean, this is pretty much. This is pretty much it for 
not it. Okay, you got your owl. <laughs> no, um, this is pretty much it for this section. Um, we have this. So let me know. Let me know where you're at. I don't want to go too fast. This is kind of the the basics, the fundamentals of this section right now. So I don't want to rush you to finish this because honestly, once we get going, it goes pretty fast. So please let me know in the comments where you're at um, and if you need a little bit more time, okay? If you are done, this is a good time to go ahead and get your um, your other colors on your palette because um, once we're finished with the black um, kind of the outside, it'll it'll go pretty quick. So we can just we can go ahead and put the other colors down. Um, I'm using um, specifically the colors I'm using is raw umber, which is a very dark brown. I'm using yellow medium, which is a pretty bright yellow, just like the the standard primary color yellow. I already have white and black. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more white on my palette. Usually when it's quiet in the comment section, I'll, I know that people are still, they're still working. So I will, I will wait until it's not so quiet. Yes, don't click on the spammers. I I should have already deleted it. The comments might be behind a little bit, so I might have already deleted it. Um, and thank you, Don, for, for saying that. I should have said something when they first got to it, but I figured I would just ban and delete real quick. Um, hi Heather, I'm Australia, awesome, yeah, feel free to watch now, paint leader, um, it'll initially be saved to my videos where you can watch it for about 48 hours, a couple days, um, and then on Wednesday I'll be moving it to YouTube, so if you don't find it, um, if you don't paint by then, and you don't find it on my page, head over to my YouTube, uh, and you'll find it there. So yeah, and all my links are, again, all my links are in the, the link up to your left. All right, let me know if you are done. Let me know when, if you're done, when you're done with this section, and then we can kind of move on. Um, if you're ready to move on, you can start painting the black. And actually, I'll just go ahead, I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, you don't necessarily need to add too much water um, I usually wet my brush, so I'll usually wet my brush a, brush a little bit um, to grab the paint, but I'm not trying to water it down. We are using water-based acrylics, um, or water-based water, water -based paints, which are acrylics. Um, so when you add water to them, not only will they become creamier and easier to move on the canvas, but it also means that they may become a little bit more translucent. It dilutes the paint. So you'll have to be careful when, whenever you're adding water to your paint, you'll have to be careful not to add too much. Now some paint and some colors, um, regardless of brand, some paint and some colors already come a little bit translucent. Um, so if you're ever using a color and it's, it's, being, it's being hard to work with and it's being translucent, um, Add a black or white or other color to it to help make it more opaque. So as I'm painting um, this background, I'm not worrying about um, I'm not worrying about the like not making a straight line. Um, or anything like that um, because again like I said earlier I'm gonna come back in uh, I'm gonna come back in with the palette knife and break up this line uh, with black so don't worry about that it can be I'd rather you go in a little bit further with the black so that we can you know make those feathers than have you know the white
So now even though most of this, most of the ears are black, um, I am going to kind of wait on that because I don't want to lose my placement yet. So, um, oh, hello, Carrie. I didn't see that. From Ottawa, 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 Canada. Good to go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so go ahead and start on the black. I'm going a little bit slower so that everyone else can kind of catch up a little bit. I tend to paint really fast, especially if it's a solid color, so I'm like, where? <laughs> so I'm particularly going slow so that everyone can catch up. Just being mindful that I'm not painting alone by myself in my room. <laughs> And for this, I'm using um, the largest filber that I have. Um, but for those of you who used to paint with me or have painted with me before, um, you'll notice that um, you'll know that I usually use my, you know, my big flat brush, which you can totally use. Um, I've actually found that I like using a large filber rather than the flat brush because um, for for the solid color, it doesn't really matter. Um, but for blending like backgrounds and things like that and sunset, um, I prefer the filber because it doesn't leave the hard edges that, you know, the, the flat brush does. And I find it actually easier to blend. So that is definitely a plus with having a large filber brush rather than just a one inch flat. But again, we're using a flat color for the background, so you don't really have to worry about that much or at all. No blending required. If you are painting the background and you have a lot of places that um, have this sort of effect, it's either because you don't have enough paint or you need a little bit more water. Um, for this specifically, I just don't have enough paint and I was just, you know, wiping it off. But if you can see kind of the texture of the canvas coming through the paint, um, you'll need to just either get a little bit more paint or water it down just a tad. Um, whenever I go in for more, more paint, I dip my paintbrush ever so slightly just to get the little tip of it wet and then I will get more paint. Um, and that just helps keep um, the paint, you know, regulated just a little bit. Um, but I'm pretty much only using, you know, the top maybe third of my brush, so I don't have a large amount of paint on my brush. Part of this is because I'm going slower for y'all, um, and part of it is just I, I don't need to fill my entire brush. If I was doing the entire thing, then I might fill it, but, and sometimes going in different directions will help fill in your, um, your canvas gaps. Um, or like kind of wiggling and going back and forth can help that too. If you have some stubborn, you know, textures that you can't, you can't get out. Now, if you're using a stretched canvas, now is a great time to remind yourself to paint all of the sides, the tops, and the bottoms. Um, I tend to always forget the side opposite of me because I can't see it. I don't want to, you know, be in front of the camera. But I remembered this time, so <laughs> hopefully I can remind you as well.
All right. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush, my, my big brush that I'm using. Because I don't think we will be needing that for the rest of the time. Put that aside. I have a quick drink of water. Hydrate. If you don't have water next to you, hydrate. This class is about a two hour class, so drink your water. All right. How are we doing? I have a feeling mine, compared to my last one, will be a little bit less fluffy. Or maybe he'll be just as fluffy, but like smaller. Or maybe like you can like see a little bit more of him. More of his chest. Regardless, it's still going to be fun. Okay, so this is where we should be at this point. Just like last time, I don't want to move. I don't want to move on before everybody is, before at least the majority of the class is caught up. I have 66 viewers. That means at least 50 of you are painting with me, right? <laughs> um, so let me know where you're at. Let me know when you're done with the black. Um, and once I get a couple more responses, I will, I'll move on for you all, okay? The next brush that we'll be using. All right, Wanda is ready. Great. Um, the next brush that we'll be using is this small silver brush. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a silver. Cool. I'm hearing a lot of readies and good to go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, again, this doesn't have to be a silver brush, but again, for for blending stuff it you have less lines um so for this part we are going to be filling in all of the like the main colors for this bird so you'll see that there's a lot of brown around around the eyes up um, on the top of the head it's a little bit darker so we'll be using more blacks and grays um, when, whenever you get close to the eyes it's a little bit lighter so you'll add whites and yellows um, and then at the bottom, again, it gets a little bit darker. Um, this is a really fun technique. So for this, this being abstract, and it's probably one of the most things that I struggle with because I like things to be blended perfectly smooth, which is why I wanted to challenge myself. Um, when we're doing this, it does not have to be perfectly smooth. So if you, if you struggle with, um, getting things to be perfectly smooth. This is a painting for you. Okay, so um, go ahead and get, if you don't already have um, these colors on your palette, go ahead and get them out. I have white, black, brown, yellow, and red. Okay, so those are the colors um, that I have on my palette right now. Technically, I don't have red, but I'm putting it on there right now. Um, and you will be kind of creating a mixture of browns. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to create our browns that we're going to be using. Now most of this will be mixed on the canvas, but I do want to pre-mix a little bit um, just so that it's easier for us. Okay, really streaky 
try to flat run versus not any better. If it's streaky, I'm guessing you have too much water. Um, which you can fix that by just adding more paint. That's the only that's the only thing I can think of it being streaky. Um, yeah, if you can see, can you see through the like through to the canvas, like the white canvas? Um, yeah, if it's if it's streaky, it usually means that you have too much water because um, it becomes really translucent and you can see um, like all of your all your paint brushes marks. Um, if you're looking at it in a certain light, sometimes like I can I can barely see some of my paint you know brushes, but some of that is the lighting, um, and also I had a little bit more water up in this area, so I can see through just a tad bit. So I would I would suggest adding a little bit more um, paint. Uh, the colors on my palette are white, black, brown. This one I have, it's called Raw Umber, but it's just a dark brown. If you have a sienna, a burnt sienna, um, get that out. We're going to be making pretty much that color. Um, so if you don't have it, don't worry. I'm going to I'm gonna be making that. Um, and then you have yellow and red. So with brown, if you don't have brown, um, you'll most likely have the primary colors. And how you make brown is you mix the primary colors. So your blue, your red, and your yellow. Um, if you don't have blue, you can mix purple and purple and yellow, or the opposite colors like green and red. That'll make brown. Um, yeah, so make your brown if you haven't. Um, and to warm up this brown, we are going to be mixing in some yellow and red. So let me just show you. I'm going to be using the smallest brush I have, and that is so that I don't waste paint in my in my brush. If I use a, you know, a large brush to mix all my paint together, I'm going to lose a lot of that color and a lot of that paint in the brush itself that I'm not using. Um, if you wanted to use the brush that you're going to use, that's fine, but you might have streaks of the original colors that you mixed go into your painting, which I don't necessarily want. So I'm going to pre-mix these colors just a little bit using my small brush, okay? Um, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown, just kind of put it down here, because I still want to use this dark brown. I'm gonna add some yellow, and I'm gonna add some red, and that will warm it up. So let me just, let's see. It is a pretty dark brown, so I will have to add quite a bit more. You can also add a little bit of white to lighten it up. So I'm just going to keep adding these three colors until I get to a warm brown that I like. All right, so as you'll notice, I don't know if you can see this, but the brown itself is a little bit red. So how I can, it's a little bit cool, so how I can brighten this up is add even more yellow. Now the reason I need to add more yellow is because yellow tends to not have a whole lot of pigment in it, so um, you just need more of it to make a difference in your in your colors. So now instead of a dark chocolate, I have a milk chocolate. And so I'll mix this and then I will turn my brush and I'll twist my brush. I'll twist my brush to get all of the paint off of there, and then I can come back around. And if you had a pot, like your other, you know, you can use your other palette for this if you wanted to. I'm just going to keep it on here. So now we have this, you know, creamy, thick brown. Um, I'm going to take some of this over here. I still have some, I still have some brown. I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow to it. To create an even lighter yellow or a lighter brown. Just so I have a couple shades to work with. Again, you don't have to do this, you can mix it all on the canvas, but I find it easier just to pre mix a couple colors. Um, and I'll still kind of like, oh, I might mix these two browns together, or I might mix this brown and the white together, or this one and the brown together, or the brown and the normal white together. Um, 
but we'll be mixing all of that on the canvas but having a couple different browns does kind of help this process so now that i'm kind of done pre-mixing a little bit um, i'll hold i will hold my palette up a little bit for you again i just want to clean out my brush if you're using any any type of brush whether or not it's a good you know high quality brush or the other ones um, whatever the quality don't leave them in the water so after you're done you're going to rinse it out wipe it down make sure that there's not any paint in it and then put it to the side don't leave it in the water um, the water will eventually seep up into this furrow which is the metal part and you'll have bristles coming out um, so keep good care of your brushes even if they're the you know cheaper ones because um, honestly they'll last you a long time if you if you take good care of them okay so don't leave them in the water and make sure you you wash them out with soap and water when you're done with this class um, so that they will be ready to use for the next class okay um, so here is oh sorry my paper towel flew off the counter um, this is my palette again so you can't see too well but I have my dark brown my kind of medium chocolatey brown it does look darker on camera than it does in person so take it up a couple notches maybe if I show on this one Is that better I don't know um, and then this I, I just added more yellow to it to make it a little bit yellowery yellower -y? No, I'm making up words <laughs> that time of night <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you have some colors to work with. We're gonna just get going. Um, now for this section, um, we're just going to go in with the color. So don't be afraid. Um, I am gonna start with my black just a little bit because um, I'm going to I'm gonna add black just to the middle part right here. I'm gonna add my black. It's roughly and if you have the full body paints this is the point where you're going to add water to whatever you're putting on your canvas um, to really just um, and when I say water, I mean just a little bit, just to make it creamy. Um, again, if you have the craft paints, you won't really need to do this. It's already creamy. Um, but just a little bit. And I'm being pretty, um, I'm not being really pretty, you know, precise where I'm putting this. You'll see, like, my marks and everything. Um, I'm just putting the paint on there. So now that I have that black... I'm going to come down, I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit just because I don't want all that darkness, just a little bit. I'm going to get, let's see, I'm going to get my lightest color. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to start putting it on there. I would encourage you throughout this process to go in the direction that the feathers are growing, even for this stage. I just get paint all over my face. Hopefully there's water. <laughs> um, because even though we're going to be adding on kind of the abstract feather technique at the end, um, we still want the background to reflect. Uh, we want the base coat to reflect the the direction of all of the um, of all of the feathers, okay, and the way that they grow. So for this specific, um, let me just kind of give you an overview. All of the feathers are going to be going away from the eyes, with the exception of the feathers right below the beak. They kind of um, feather out like from beneath the beak out. It's almost like this little chin thing. Um, so that's pretty much the only section that's not going like away from the eyes themselves. And then this kind of just goes up. 
So hopefully that helps in, um, in like kind of like what direction you want to go with it. Um, and again, you can add whatever colors you want. So just right here, I'm just, I have brown on my brush. I got a little bit of yellow, got a little bit of white, and I'm just going to add on these colors. Maybe I'll go into my dark brown and maybe do the edge here. And then kind of mix it in. Again, I'm, I'm mixing it in, but I'm not... I'm not making everything super duper blendy perfect, right? You can still see the brush strokes. You can still see um, that. And I think I'm gonna go in with this yellow. That I'm, I'm kind of creating like a tan. And I'm going to brighten up this eye right here. This is the fun part that's like, I feel like you can do no wrong. Um, I will say just try to make the like the, the middle of the face, like the brightest point, like around the eyes and stuff. And then everything else you can really just go crazy. Um, the light source, if you're wondering, the light source is just coming from the front. There's not like a specific, oh, the light source is coming from the top left corner. There's nothing like that. It's coming from the front. So there's not really like a one side needs to be, you know, lighter or darker. Um, but yeah, just go for it. So um, I'm working kind of from one side to the next. Uh, the reason being is that I want, in order for this technique to kind of work and for everything to like be easy to blend, is that it needs to be wet. So as you work, go from different colors, um, add different colors to it, um, and just like I added that lighter color on top of the other colors, if you need to kind of change your colors, that's okay. As long as it's wet, you can, you know, you can add those other colors in. I'm going to go back back in. I kind of pre-mix a little bit of this yellow and this white. I get both, both sides. I load both sides of my brush by going back and forth. I'm going to blend it in. Once you start blending into the darker color, um, the... The colors that you're that are on your brush do become darker so you will have to if you kept if you want to keep using that bright color you'll have to go back into your colors so I'm just going to come in here with some white um, it may not look like white because it it uh, blended with the yellowish brownish color that I already had on my on my brush And I'm just gonna little little bits at a time add these these uh, colors. So we kind of have some gold, some browns. On the top of this, um, we will be going over it with black, like a golden yellow um, that we'll create, um, and our white. So even if it's, it looks a little bit dark now, but we will be brightening it up with our palette knife. So don't worry if it's not, you know, if it's not super bright.
If you have any questions so far, feel free to leave a comment below. I am all ears. If your paint is starting to dry and you still want to blend it a little bit, just dip your um, dip, a, dip in a little bit of water and then dab it on your paper towel so it's not dripping. Um, and then you can, if it's not completely dry, then you'll be you'll still be able to blend a little bit. So what I'm doing over here on the side is I'm just, I'm going up and down because I, I want to make sure that I cover all of the, like, the white. Um, so I am going up and down. I'm not going, um, you know, away from the eyes. But once I get that paint in there, then I use the wet paint and I, I go in the direction that the feathers are. Um, what did you say about the feather directions? The feather directions, um, I'm simply looking at the eyes and the feathers are essentially going away from the eyes. Um, so they're all growing kind of, you know, so the ones on top of the head are kind of growing um, up and out. The ones on the side are going out. The ones on, on the bottom are going down. So just, if you're not sure which direction, um, you're not sure which direction, the feather goes, um, just look at the eyes and go away from them.
All right, so now I'm just filling in, um, just putting color on the um, the ears. Um, we will be covering up most of this with our palette knife, but just in case I, you know, I miss any spot, I don't want it to be bright white. Um, so, and then the second thing is that I'm going in with my black, um, maybe a tad bit of white, so it's not completely black, um, but I'm going to cover in all of this. I, I didn't do complete black because I still want to see this line. So even if you can't see it, I can see it. And then when you get closer to the, the face, or closer to like the middle of the face, you can start adding in your, you know, your brighter colors. Um, I know there's, there's a lot of glare right now. I'm going to see if I can help that real quick. Well, that helps a little bit. I will have to move this up a little bit. Um, so while I'm kind of fixing this, go ahead and finish up that section. <laughs> All right, so it didn't fix it completely, but it definitely helped. So... Good, okay. okay. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this little section I have here. All right, then you can take some of your yellow, and I just like made some of my own texture. You don't have to do this. I just, with kind of a dry brush, I just went up and down and just added some texture up here. And you can do this kind of anywhere you want. But we're going to be adding all sorts of texture to this, so... Again, this is just the background.
Hello from North Carolina. Hello, Deanna. Is it Deanna or Diana? I have I have two friends. Um, one is Deanna and one is Diane. And every time I want to say their name, I have to like remember the two names so I can get her name right. <laughs> so I apologize if I said that wrong. But hello, welcome. Are you planning to um, Are you planning to paint with us later? No pressure if you're not. If you're just here to say hi, that's totally cool too. All right. So once we've got that, I'm going to come back in and put more of this black um, for the ears. Um, so don't worry about that. Actually, I might do that now. Is this dry? Yeah, so this is dry. So if yours is dry, you can come back in. And I'm just flicking my brush out to you know, insinuate that there's um, feathers. I'm kind of flicking my brush. Okay. So before we go on, Oh, okay. That makes sense. Awesome. Um, if you don't find this video on my page um, or on the event, because um, it'll it, on Wednesday it'll get moved to YouTube. So if you don't find it on my page um, or the event, then just follow the link over there, um, and you can see my YouTube over there. And yeah, it'll be uploaded on a Wednesday. So depending on when you paint. Let's see. Um, yeah, okay. I think we're at a place where we can move on to the we can move on to the eyes, okay? Um, now for the eyes, we are gonna switch. Go ahead and make sure that your brush is rinsed out um, and it's kind of put to the side. I think we're done with all the brushes except for this medium brush, okay? Uh, or sorry, this uh, the small paintbrush. So just get a whatever small round detailed brush that you're using. Um, I'm going to very quickly just put in where I want my my eyes to be. I mean, obviously we already know where they're going to be, but I'm going to outline them in black. Give this guy a little bit of eyeliner, okay? Um, so I'm going to, let's see. So just with pure black, I'm just going to really make these eyes stand out. And this guy does have like white little eyebrows. I haven't put them in yet, um, but they have like white little fur brows, fur brows, <laughs> feather brows, <laughs> um, right here. So we'll put those in after this black dries. Um, but yeah, so we'll put these in. Um, I mean, try to make them kind of like the same size and symmetrical. But if you really look at eyes, no eye is perfectly symmetrical. I'm pretty sure my right ear is like either higher or lower than my other ear. Like whatever. This is an abstract painting, y'all. Do what you want. <laughs> but yeah, so try to make them try to make them symmetrical um, as best as you can. Um, Alright, so I'm just kind of 
going around the outside so that I know where to place um, my my red. Make sure that that looks okay. Yeah. It looks, you know, let me see it in person because sometimes it's hard to paint because I like I'm painting from the side always, like I'm not seeing it straight on. Sometimes I need to look at it with my with my eyes. Because if I don't, if you've seen um, my last painting I did of the peacock, the head was uh a tad bit too big <laughs> in my opinion and I I liked the painting I just didn't like how how uh, big the head was but I didn't really notice it until I was painting it in which was like at the end and by then you can't really fix it and that was honestly just because I I couldn't really see what I was doing okay because if I'm in front of the camera then you can't see so all right I'm happy with that. From Orange County. Hi, Robin. I know, there's a lot of people I didn't say hi to in person because you uh, said where you're from and you said hi long before I got on. So hello to everyone. And Orange County. Is it hot in Orange County? It cooled off a little bit here in San Diego. Just, just a little bit. It did cool off a little bit. But let me know the weather where you're at, um, wherever you're at. If it's nice outside, if you're painting outside, or if you're cuddled up with hot chocolate because it's cold. I don't remember the question I asked, Robin. Is it hot or cold? Did it cool down? Is that you're saying yes to it cooled down or yes that it's hot? Um, when you're doing the irises, if you haven't already done them, I typically, because I'm I'm drawing this in just blatant black, um, I'm, I drew it a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be, and I am correct that it is too small, so I'm just going to go around and make it a little bit bigger. I can always come back and go over the red to make it bigger too, but sometimes I like to put in the iris because it looks weird when the iris isn't there. 60s and beautiful foil. Oh my goodness. Jealous. Raining. Raining. Oddly enough, I kind of wish it was raining. It would be a little bit humid, but it would mean that it's like cooling off. Um, I grew up in the snow, so I'm used to like when it's Christmas, there's snow on the ground. And in San Diego, that's not the case. I haven't had snow on the ground since I was like, I want to say like 10. Because I used to live up in uh, the, the, the mountains, North, Northern California. Uh, so I grew up in snow. As a kid, I loved it. I'm sure my dad didn't like, you know, all the snow plowing and stuff, but. I have lots of fond memories of guessing when the first snowfall would be and all sorts of fun stuff. I want to go to the mountains. It's just, maybe that's what we'll do. My family and I have been trying to figure out like some sort of adventure to go on because we've kind of been cooped up for a while, as a lot of you may have been as well. Um, maybe we'll go to the woods.
Okay. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I think I made the eyes a little bit too dark or too big, just the irises. So instead of letting it dry and going over with the red, I'm just kind of lifting off with water. Just a little bit of the bottom. So if you've never done this before, if you've just put down a layer of something, you can grab some water and just kind of move the paint and you can take off a layer. So that's kind of a cool technique. So I'm just wiping off the excess color after I kind of make it. Uh, would you ever paint yellow first and then the black on the eyes? Yeah, I would. Um, I think I tend to like to get the the Overall, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking off the black because I kind of went too much. Um, if I had already done the background, like the actual color, like that, you know, the eye color, I wouldn't really be able to do that. Like what I do with the black is how it has to be. Um, so in my opinion, for this specific um, part, I like to know where the black is going to be. Um, so that um, so that I know that it looks good um, before I get to it. No, that's just my preference. Um, you can you can for sure do this. Um, you know, after. All right, so now what you're going to do um, is we're actually putting red on this first, um, not yellow. So I'm going to get some red on here because I already used it all. I'm going to get my smallest brush still. Get this plain old red and fill in this whole area. And don't worry about going over any of the black because um, you can always come back with the black and kind of outline it again. So while it's still wet, you're going to grab some of your yellow and you're going to mix it in to just this middle part right here. And can, you can do that by, you know, stippling it or going in circles. We'll be doing this a couple times, so don't worry if it's not bright yellow at this point. Um, the eyes are a lot of different layers. So if you watched my speed video, um, I spend probably I don't know, a minute 
out of the two and a half minute speed video on just the eyes. So grab some water. We're going to be on the eyes for a little bit. Um, but that's really just, you know, so that everything else can dry. Because we want, we want the rest of this to be dry before we go in with the palette knife. And honestly, you want to spend a lot of time on the eyes because that is really the focus of this painting are the eyes. Like everything else is pretty abstract and then you just have these big, bold, pretty beautiful eyes um, that are staring, staring into your soul. Just kidding. Um, that are just staring at you. So um, don't skimp on the eyes. We're going we're gonna to take our time with this section. So again, once you get that red in, we're going to add some of this yellow. I'm just going to go around in circles, plop it down. So I'm going back and forth with each step that we do. And when we add on layers, I'm going to go back and forth between the two eyes. And this will allow the other eye to dry while we do each section. if not at least for a few minutes. It's not going to be completely dry by the time we get to it, but it'll, it'll at least help when we're mixing, okay? So the next part is I'm going to create almost like the, the shadow that the eyes have. So if you'll notice, when you're looking at the eyes, it has like the shadow on the inner, um, essentially where the eyes meet um, the top of the eyelid. You have just the slightest amount. Um, the slightest amount of on the top here. So you'll add a little bit of black and then you can go in with your red and mix that in. And you'll do that on both sides. Um, Suzanne, or Susan, um, when I... When I was talking about the speed video, I have, when I originally painted this, I recorded it and I have a speed video of it on my, um, on my YouTube. So if you want to go see a speed video of me painting the original one, um, that's on my YouTube. So that's what I was referring to. It's about a minute and a half. Um, and I spent about, you know, a minute of that, that video, um, on just the eyes, um, so, I don't know, I probably spent an hour on the first painting, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. Um, so I probably spent, I don't know, 20, 20, 30 minutes on just the eyes. But honestly, that's, you know, when you look at this photo, when you look at this painting, like, what do you, what's your eye drawn to? Um, for me, it's drawn to the eyes. It's drawn to... The eyes and then I kind of weary from there I look from there and I look at all the detail but my eye my the first thing my eye is drawn to is the eyes um, and if you if you skimp on the eyes and you don't spend as much time on it they're not going to be as detailed which is fine but um, I don't know we want we want to spend the time on them So I'm just going back in with um, another coat of this yellow.
So I'm just kind of stippling um, and stippling these different colors in here. You could honestly, you know, make these eyes any color you wanted. Um, if you wanted it not to be like uh, like a realistic abstract type painting, because um, this was based off of a real, um, a real. I was looking at a real photo when I was uh, as inspiration for this. Um, and I mean, one of the reasons I picked it was because I loved the eyes. Um, but honestly, you could do ice blue eyes. You could do green eyes. Um, you could have a lot of fun with this one, actually. Um, so okay, so I've done I've done the darkening on the tops of it. Um, I don't know if you can can see that. So I've done the darkening. Stippling. What is stippling? That's a really good question. Um, stippling is when you go um, on and off, or I say up and down, but it's it's not up and down because I'm <laughs> I'm going side to side. Um, but if you have a you know a piece of paper and you're going up and down on it, you're stippling. Typically, we use this technique with either a sponge, a stipple. You stipple with a sponge, um, or if you have a really frayed brush, um, you can stipple with that. You can stipple pretty much with anything. So stippling is just um, you're going on and off the canvas or up and down, um, and you're that's how you're blending it. Hope that helps. So that's what I, what I mean by stippling. So instead of going back and forth in a smooth manner, you're going um, you're going up and down, or you're you're pouncing on it um, gently. Obviously, you don't want to ruin your brushes, but you're you're just tapping it um, with whatever color you're using. So now I'm going to go over and do the same thing over here. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to where the um, where the eyelids kind of are, and then I'm going to go back in with red and mix it into what I already have. So add a little bit of black. Rinse off my brush. Go in with my red, and I'm going to mix in that dark color. And do the same on this side. Why is this moving? There we go. And then for the lighter part, I'm going to go back in with my white. I mean my yellow, sorry. I misspoke. My, my white. I just misspoke again. It's yellow. Going in with my yellow. Um, putting the yellow on there. White is next. We're going to put white on it and then brighten it up. Um, so then you can go in there and you can stipple. And that will that will blend it in. It also gives it a texture, which is really cool. All right, again, don't worry about getting it on the black. You can always clean up that line at the end. Um, the black right now is just kind of like a placeholder for the eyes as we put in our color. You can always make those lines a little bit cleaner once we're done with the color part. Um, so now I have kind of like that second step done. I'm going to go in with just my pure white. So what we're going to do is we're going to put white on here, still stippling but it's gonna create almost like a mask for it. 
so that when we put our yellow back on it, it's going to be really, really bright. So right now it's kind of mixing with the red. Um, it's becoming a little bit more orange. Um, we're going to put white on this, stipple that in, and then once we put the yellow, which is semi-translucent, it's going to really bring out the brightness of the yellow. So put your white really where you want your yellow to show through. So I'm going to put it right there, maybe a couple pieces over here. Go back in with my white and do the same thing on the other side. My white is pretty dry, so it's like it's not really blending all that much, but that's totally fine. That's kind of what I want. Okay, so I got my white on there. So now. I'm going to get some of this yellow. I'm going to add just a tad bit of water to it because I don't want it to be, I kind of want it to be a little bit translucent. And I'm just going to do the same thing and stipple on my yellow. And you can always come back in with a little bit of red, like if you've made it too, you know, too yellow, you can come back in with a little bit of your red. So just spend the time and play with the colors. Um, Gail, yes. Um, she says, I've completely missed this tutorial. Can I come back and view it and paint it later? Yes, you can. Um, this, um, this video will automatically save to my videos on Facebook. Um, it'll be available for about 48 hours, and then it'll be moved to my YouTube channel where you can paint it whenever you want. Um, so if you don't paint it within a couple days and you don't find it on my Facebook page, go ahead and head over to YouTube um, and you'll be able to find it there. Again, I'm just adding this yellow to um, the right eye. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions so far? The eyes are a little bit of a uh, choose your own path a little bit. So I want to make sure that I can help you in the best way possible and the best way that I can. Um, especially since I can't really, I can't really see what you're all are doing. Because we're not in like a class setting. So let me know if you need help with anything. Hopefully you all are having fun and this is relaxing for you because that is the goal, just to have a night to yourself. If you're painting with a friend, let me know because that's always fun. 
Um, I've had a couple like families paint together, so that's really fun. Um, and they'll post all their, you know, all their paintings together, which is super fun. Um, yeah, actually, I'll talk about that right now while we're kind of finishing up the eyes. Um, first, it, once you're done with the eyes, let me know because everyone's going to be on a different page. So I'm going to wait until I have like at least 10 people um, who let me know that they're ready. Okay. Um, so at the end of this session, I will be taking a picture of me with mine, uh, with my painting, and I'll be posting it on a, the event page. Now, the event page um, should be in the description of this live post. Um, so you can go there. If you're viewing this from YouTube later, um, I'll still have a link in the description um, and you can share it there. Um, but if it's Thursday or Friday, I might have already posted. So you can actually head over to my page and you can post it there um, if I've already posted. But if I haven't posted yet of all your lovely paintings, um, head over to the event itself, which you can find in the link or in the description. Um, or you can go straight to my page click on events and it should be under past events and you can go to it there. So then you'll post, um, I will have my painting and in the comment section, then you can um, post your painting and then I'll take all those and brag about you guys and, um, and post it on my Facebook page. So that's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, if at any point you want to support me and give me a tip or anything like that, um, I have a couple um, one-time tipping options of Venmo and Cash App. Um, or my PayPal at uh, SamanthaAndersonArtist at gmail.com. Um, but if you're interested in Patreon, um, definitely click the link. All the information is in um, that link. Just click on Patreon and you can read all about it. Um, essentially, it's like an ongoing tip. For the lowest, it's $5. So if you're already thinking about giving a $5 tip or donation, head over there because um, there's so much. Um, I already have a couple um, tip videos and a couple other classes on there um, and some other fun stuff. And like you saw earlier, I gave away um, an art donation um, depending on what they want. You can So you can um, be in the drawing for that. So that's a lot of fun. But yeah, we're just kind of, we're building a community where we can all learn together and that's really fun. So um, if you want to do a, you know, you don't have to um, tip at all, but if you do want to tip, you have that information, and if you want to join us over on Patreon, um, click the link, and we will see you over there. Um, yeah, I think, are we ready? Let's see. Um, I have Julie done, Becky done. Okay, I'm going to wait for a couple more people, because I know the eyes can take a long time. Um, if you're kind of done with this section, you can go ahead and um, put in any black, kind of fix any black that you need to. Um, I know I need to fix this bottom section right here just to make it really clean. And we're also going to add like a little um, reflective water I like eyeline at the bottom. Done. Okay, perfect. So yeah, if you're at this point, you can go ahead and fix any lines that you need to. So make all those lines nice and clean. No apologies, that's okay. We're still kind of waiting. Um, can't seem to get the same effect in the eyes. Kind of looks bloodshot. Um, thank you for explaining the, the stippling. Yeah, of course. Um, bloodshot, like they're they're really bright and red. Um, maybe try adding. I know that mine are a little bit um, more red on the edges. Um, if you wanted to, you could go in with some maybe orange, um, maybe orange or um, some more yellow. You can, instead of stippling, you can like go in a little bit of lines because that's, you know, eyes have that like, like the lines in their eyes going to the center of the pupil. So you could do a couple lines just to lighten it up, break it up so it's not so, um, so it's not so red. Um, if that is what you're <laughs> referring to. I tend to like, we could have started off with more of an orange, but I tend to like to have that deep dark color first, um, and then we can always lighten it up. 
And that's what I did with the original. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you can still work on it. Like I just added that and I like it more. Um, it added a little bit, again, mine was kind of red shot a little bit too. Um, so this just added a little bit more. A little bit more lightness. So hopefully that helps Robin. If this is your guys' first uh, paint night with me, um, welcome. I do these every other Monday night. So if you liked tonight and you liked painting with me, definitely head over um, to my events on my page. I think I have three more up right now. And my Patreons are currently um, voting on what to paint next. So I have like an abstract ballerina. Um, something with a boat and then succulents. Currently succulents is winning. Um, but if you come become a Patreon and then, um, you can vote on what we paint next. So that will be like the, I think November 30th. So I already have, I think three already in the running. So you can go on my events and, um, and see what we're going to paint next. But yeah. I think it does too. Um, Patricia says your owl looks better now. I think, I think so too doesn't have so much of the the red in it okay so I have I fixed um, so I fixed mine Robin maybe it was my fault you were just copying what I did and they looked they looked bloodshot because mine looked bloodshot <laughs> that's my fault guys okay so I fixed it over here um, I'm gonna fix it again because I just kind of updated my I updated them. I'm gonna do this line one more time. Okay, so then I'm gonna go, I did go over the pupil just a little bit, so I'm gonna really make that round and clean. Making sure that I don't go too big, <laughs> like I did the first time. Let's see that looks. What is my website? Um, my website is samanthaandersonartist.com. Um, and actually, thank you for reminding me. If you are interested in buying the supplies that I use, I actually have all of the supplies that I recommend on my website. Um, you'll just go to samanthaandersonartist.com and you'll click on art supplies. Um, and you can buy pretty much everything that I use in my classes as well as other things that I practice with. So when I paint live, I'll use a, a canvas, um, like a stretch canvas. But for all my classes that I do, um, you'll see in my, um, you'll see whenever, whenever I do a class for my Patreon, um, or if I do classes, or, or not classes, but um, like the speed paints and things like that for my classes, I'll do it on a canvas paper pad, which is, which was one of the items that you could win. Um, but yeah, so all of that stuff, if you if you have a friend um, that's never painted before and you have no idea what to get her um, or him and, like, you need help with that, you can go on my website. Um, and I have, like, all-inclusive kits that you get kind of a little bit of everything. Um, or if you need to get, like, specific tools, um, I have things listed, kind of a couple different options of everything. Um, so if you need help with that, you can go on there and grab some um supplies but um if you haven't been to my website you probably i don't know if you know um, but i'm mainly a face painter um, and i do painting parties so um you'll see a lot of face painting and balloons on my website right now because i haven't really switched it over totally to reflect what i'm doing currently that's kind of like the pre-covid um website but I do have my art supplies and like my painting stuff on there. So, oh, okay, Robin, um, mine looks better now. Good, I'm glad. Um, it's just more blended look that, if that makes sense. I can't seem to get the same contrast as you without it looking like little globs or streaks of paint. Not sure how to explain. Um, let's see. Is this this is your first time painting like forever? That's cool. Welcome. That's fun. Yay! I love I love beginners. 
you'll notice that I've been painting for a very long time. It gets addicting, so welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so it looks more blended. Honestly, that's okay. It can look blended. It doesn't have to have a whole lot of, like, texture. That's okay, too. Um, honestly, it's your painting. Um, own it. If that's how you want your eyes and that's how your eyes are coming out, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to look like mine, and most of yours won't. Mine doesn't even look exactly like the one I created not like a month ago. That's okay. I chose a different path, you know. So um, I hope that helps. It's okay. That looks different. Um, okay. After you kind of have your eyes done. You're gonna go back in. Oh, I still have to finish doing the. I've been talking. I've been chatting. Sorry, guys. Um, just finishing. Okay, so I did that. Okay, that's good. That's done. All right. You'll go ahead and go into your white now. Um, you'll go into your white, and you're gonna do like a little line. You're gonna do a line from the corner of the eye to the top of the eye. It's almost like a, like a water line. And don't worry, we're gonna come back and blend it in a little bit. So it's not so prevalent. So you're gonna come back with your black. And you're going to kind of go over it a little bit so that it's not um, it's not so bright. And it kind of blends the edges. Does that make sense? So now, uh, let's see. I'll just move this. So now you have... I blended the edges, you see that? So I had my, my white line that went from here all the way, and then I came back and I, I took some black and I blended, I blended the sides. So now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. See if I can do this while I hold it. Uh, there we go. Other side dried a little bit, so I'm going to go and dip into my water just the slightest bit. And I'm going to gently blend it. Don't get used to it being this close. It's really hard to paint and have the camera this close to what I'm doing. But hopefully it helps you for this section. And if you wanted the, you know, the part, that part to be even more bright, you could go in with your white again, just for that section though. And make it brighter. So I did that and I wiped it off. So now I'm just going to blend that. I'm barely touching the canvas. Barely touching the canvas. I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing. Again, you don't have to do this. I just my my original white was pretty watery, if you saw. So I'm just kind of making this section just a tad bit brighter. Rinse off my brush. Blend just that where they where they touch, I'm going to blend it a little bit. My brush is practically clean, so I'm not... Okay. Alright, 
hopefully that was helpful. Let it adjust. Now you can see from this side. I help. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white. I'm going to put a couple of the highlights on there. So they're going to go right up here. So I did three highlights on the on the right one. I did a couple dots and then I did kind of like a streak. And then over here, I'm gonna do just one dot and a and a streak. All right, so now that you have the gloss, um, we're going to go ahead and add some white eyebrows. And I'm just flicking my flicking my um my brush. I'm also going to flick down a little bit into the eye. Because he's got a furry. He's got furry, yes. Putting life into the eyes. Are you talking about um, adding adding that reflection? It just it, it helps so much in making it come to life. Okay, so that's my little eyebrow. Pretty cute. Um, I'm sorry, my hand's in the way. Come over here. There we go. Um, just going to add another little eyebrow. So I'm just kind of looking up with my brush. Going back in with a little bit of water, a little bit more paint. Kind of mixing them and rolling my brush before I get to the canvas, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna come down a little bit, blend it in, just ever so slightly. Look how cute! How cute he is! Maybe it's a girl. I don't know. Maybe this one's a girl, my other one's a boy. Ooh. Look how cute. Alright. Come down a little bit with a little bit more of the cover up. The close-up really helps to see what you're doing with the eyes. Yes, I'm glad I decided to do that. I could have done that earlier. I just didn't think about it. Sometimes it's hard to hold the camera and paint, but if it helps you, then it's worth it. Um, 
Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do before we get to the um, before we get to the palette knife part, which is it, that part is really fast and you can do however much you want on it. So uh, we are we are almost done with this um, with this part. Um, but you're going to take um, your whites and your blacks and your grays and you're just going to paint in the um, you're going to go ahead and paint in the beak okay so it's it's dark it's dark on the um, on the bottom um, I miss the starting just joined will this session be recorded yes all my classes are recorded automatically to my Facebook page um, but after about 48 hours this one will be moved to my YouTube channel which if you um, look to the, your upper left, there's a link, um, and you can find all my links to all my social media um, in that one link. So, yeah, if you'd like to paint this with us, you're welcome to, um, you can go directly to my videos after it airs or after we're done, um, or you can wait until Wednesday and go to YouTube. All right, so I'm just going back and forth, kind of blending it that way. Blending it in streaks. I'm just slowly adding a, a, a more and more layers on it. I started with the white, and then I had some some darker black, and then I mixed them, so which created a gray. And then I'm slowly just adding a darker and darker color on the bottom until it kind of gets black. And I'm just flicking my brush, I'm flicking my brush up. Okay. Um, eventually, you'll you can flick your brush out a little bit because the it's kind of where the the feathers are going at this point. They're going like this. Um, yes, I was using black, so I was using just gray. I was using my white and my black. Um, just black. Yep. All right, now it's the fun part. So make sure that you have um, doing doing um, palette knife does take a good amount of paint, but obviously um, you can always add more to your canvas. Um, we are going to premix a little bit of this like yellowish goldish color um, so I already have yellow on my canvas or on my palette sorry um, and I'm adding I am like practically out of white so I'm going to add white um, I'm adding enough white to um, not only use white as a color to use my for my palette knife but I'm also adding enough so that I can mix it with my yellow um, on a different part of my palette so I can kind of use that. Okay. 
This is the fun part and you can take as little or as much time with this as you want. So I'm going to do mine pretty quickly um, so that I can get to the end of that and show you what to do at the very end. Um, but take your time with this. You can take as much time with you as you want, as you have. Um, this will probably take at least 15 minutes, maybe 10. Um, but I try, I usually try to keep my classes around two hours. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just dive in. So I started off with um, just my black. So how you do this is you get your palette knife and you're just going to get a little bit and you're going to scrape it off. So then you have a clump of this and you're going to go, you can do little, little motions. And just add, add all your texture, okay? Okay. Um, if you haven't started yet, can I show your palette? Yes, it's very messy. Um, I have my yellow, my black, my white, and then I and I kind of pre-mix some of this golden yellow, which is literally just my white and my yellow mixed together. Um, I am going to go in with just my yellow and maybe a little bit of red that I'm kind of pre-mixing a little bit. And I'm going to, I'm going to add the, I'm going to add this right here. So I'm just going up and down and I'm, I'm sliding it. I'm doing a couple different things. Um, I know it's hard to see, but there's, there's a, I'll do it here on the other side too. Um, I'm going to just add this color on the top. Um, the, the trick with this is try to use just one side, okay? So you're going to just use one side of this, and you can go up and down. You can pull it down. Does that make sense? I need just a little bit more yellow for mine. So Becky, um, we are kind of coming to a close and this, for this section, it's literally just this, like the same thing, like the same technique throughout the whole thing. So it, once you get to this point, if you need me to reiterate like how to do something, I can totally do that, but I want to get to the end for me specifically so that I can show you what to do at the end because you could take 30 minutes on this or you could take 10 minutes. So I want to equip the class with the abilities to just um, kind of go off on however fast they're going to do it. Um, and yeah, I hope that makes sense. So once you get to this point, if you need me to reiterate um, how to do something, just let me know and I can I can do that because it's the same technique the whole time. And the colors, honestly, there's not really a wrong color to use, if that makes sense. I'm just, I'm creating more of like the, the bright yellows on top, but then I'm going to stick with the whites. Oh, you're still on the nose. Okay. Well, I mean, the nose is the last thing that we did before we started this, so that's totally fine. I call it a nose too. It's the beak, but yes, I know what you're, I know what you mean. Um, but yeah, so the palette knife is, it's the same technique. Um, 
So we're going to do, I did kind of like the yellows and um, the yellows first. So again, you're just going to go away from the, away from the eyes, just like we did for everything else, okay? So then I'm going to take some of my, like, um, my kind of golden color, and I'm just going to add it in, this is kind of like my medium tone, because I have my black, my white, and then my yellow. So I'm just going to add this. So there's there's a couple different ways that you can add this. You can you can scrape it down. For this specific for the bird, I tend to like to go in the direction of the um, in the direction of the, the, the feathers. Um, like that. It's gonna look weird at first, but uh, once you start adding all the other colors, I'm going to go back into my black, start adding some black, and when you get to the black, you can go a little bit more crazy on the, on the edges of the bird. This is what gives it that, like, because, because we did a black background, and this is kind of one of the reasons why I did the black background, it makes it really easy to break up um, makes it really easy to break up that line that we created earlier and all of a sudden got feathers And you can use just the very tip of the um, of the palette knife. You can use the whole side of it. You'll notice that I'm just going back and forth, like I'm putting it down on like the side that I have to paint, and I'm going back and forth to um, to like release the paint. If that makes sense. I tend to not add too much black to the middle of the face. 
um, but you can add just a little bit. Now I'm going in with my white. And this, the white really livens up um, the, the painting. can also add a little bit of this to the um, to the little eyebrows if you wanted to I know that a lot of this session will really just be playing because I know like not everyone has painted with a palette knife and it might be a little bit hard for some who've never done it before but it's really just I really encourage you to just play with it um, you're not gonna learn it overnight but just experiment with different angles going in different directions um, yeah and just play with it and see what see how the different directions affect um, how much you know paint is let off. I think it's that one. I'm gonna try to fix this light for y'all. That better. Let's see if I can fix this glare. I know it's really hard to see. That's that's what he looks like. But now it's like facing forward and it's hard to... Here, I'll just... Alright, where is everybody at? Hopefully you're not too far behind and you still have... You've been able to start on the... Um, you've been able to start at least. Would an old empty gift card work for as a palette knife? Yeah! Yes, you could definitely try that. Um, you could even like if you, I mean, if you're, if it's an old, you know, you don't care about it. You could even cut it into like the shape if you wanted to. Um, or maybe just, but yeah, if the gift card is like has like a round edge at the corner, then you could use that as like you know your tip, whatever, because this tip has like a rounded corner. Definitely. Go for it. Would one ever add gesso to paint in a palette knife process? Um, I'm sure someone has. Gesso is typically a primer for painting, for acrylic painting. It's typically a primer. Um, I've never used it in that way. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure you could, um, but it's essentially just a really thin white paint-ish. Like, that's kind of how I think of it. Um, so, you, I mean, you, you could try. 
Um, typically with this, you want it to be like thick and gesso tends to be um, thinner and like not waterier, but um, just not as thick. So I don't know. I mean, if you if you have it and you want to try it, you totally can. Like if you don't have any white, I would say why not? Um, so the thing I was talking about before is like the end um, is just getting that black. We kind of did it a little bit before. Um, we did it before we got to the white, where you just add black, and it helps it helps um, get rid of that line. So that's essentially what I wanted to get to, which I I already did it. Um, but um, would modeling paste work? Um, modeling paste. I don't know. I haven't I haven't worked with modeling paste to an extent. Um, so I don't I don't know about that. Modeling paste is a different medium than acrylics. So I'm not sure how they would mix. So that would definitely be an experiment that you'd have to try. <laughs> I don't I wouldn't be the best person to. Um never used a palette knife before. He's looking He's looking like he was in a really bad pillow fight. You know, I feel like mine kind of looks like that too. I think my first one I tend to, so this is what I was talking about in that like I'm looking I'm looking mainly at the picture that you're all seeing. Um not only the picture itself but the um the camera angle. So sometimes I'm like, "Oh, it looks good from like, you know, the 45 degree angle that I'm I'm viewing it from but then like when I look at the picture I'm like he looks mine also looks like he just got hit with a pillow and he's kind of like oh, during the headlights a little bit <laughs> um, I bought some clear gesso to add color okay I mean gel gesso I'd have to look in to that I don't know is gesso normally Gel? I mean, it's gesso. I'd have to look into that. I'm not sure. I mean, you could definitely, you definitely try it. Um, no harm in that, other than potentially wasting paint. But I'm going to. Add a little bit more of this like creamy off-white color. I think mine kind of looking in that way because so when you get to the top of the head, you don't want you don't want them going straight out. They're kind of more coming from the top of the head rather than straight from the eye. I think that's why mine started to look like he had just gotten hit with a pillow. So, um, I apologize for not recognizing that earlier. But you can just add a couple more, a couple more pieces. It already, he already looks better. And again, you can come in with the palette, with black to help kind of re uh, redo this part a little bit. All right, he looks he looks a little better. Not so hit with a pillow. <laughs> Although I kind of liked him. <laughs> okay. So once you're done with that, you can come in. I have a scarecrow. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, how far down from the top of the head should the beak go? 
think mine is too far down. Um, honestly, there are many different owls that have all, just like humans, have different shapes. Um, so do so do owls. Um, you'll notice in my original picture, the eyes are a little bit smaller, um, and the beak is a little bit smaller. I knew I wanted when I when I redid this um, in the original picture the eyes were a little bit bigger so I knew I wanted to have the eyes a little bit bigger in this one um, so I made that adjustment but I I think I made my beak too big um, so at this point like it's it's okay so if 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 it's too far down and that's how it is that's okay maybe mine is actually a baby owl that's why the beak is you know bigger. Um, Maybe yours is just a very majestic owl with the beak elongated and far down, you know? So I'm sure it has character, so as mine does too. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Again, you can spend as much time on this as you want. I'm going to add a couple more um, details of um, some of these going out. I'm just adding some of um, adding some of this kind of feathery look down at the bottom. Um, also, you guys aren't seeing my entire picture because I updated this. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Um, Um, also, if I actually had this to fit here, it's that big. So, there's that. There you go. Okay. I think he's cute. Um, I'm going to add, you'll notice here um, that I can kind of still see the line that I had originally created. I'm going to show you how to break that up, okay? So you're going to take you're going to take some of your black, put it on your palette or put it on your your palette knife, and you're just going to go you're just going to go in and break it up. I need more black. Um, but I promise we're almost done with this, at least for me. You again, you can you can spend as much time on this as you want. Um, especially if you're new to the palette knife, um, Take your time, but I'm going to break this up a little bit. You'll notice I'm just going to go in different spots, anywhere where I kind of see this. I'm going to break it up a little bit. Does that make sense? See how you kind of can't see it anymore? And it like pulled out those, um, it pulled them out, pulled out the, the feathers. Seriously, baby owl. Look at his fluffy feathers. <laughs> I have a mom and a baby right now. This is what it is. I'm running with it. It's my, my little baby owl. I like him. So this is, so for those of you who don't know, this is the first time I am, I kind of explained it in the beginning, but this is the first time I'm teaching one of my works. So for those of you who have painted with me before, that was me recreating somebody else's work, um, which is why those won't be going up to face, uh, won't be going up. They'll stay on Facebook, but they're not going up to YouTube. I just don't feel comfortable because it's not my work. So um, I'm, go I'm only going to put up my work. Um, but for... For doing this sort of thing, like, you know, painting painting um, the other thing, most of the time I was painting it for the first time. So I wasn't repainting it. I was just painting it for the first time with you. But because I've painted for a while, I can deconstruct it and teach it to you by just looking at a painting um, for the most part. And 
it was okay if mine didn't look exactly like the, the painting because it wasn't my work to begin with. Like what I painted was my work. But looking at this, like they're both my work. So it's really fun to look at the differences and like how I chose to paint this one versus that one. And it's like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. And it's like I was mom and a little baby. So yeah, okay. Um, questions. Robin asks, um, does it work to go in with the paintbrush after to try and blend it all? Struggling to get the long lines with the palette knife like yours. Okay. Um, yeah, you can if you want to, but it won't have the, like, almost like the dry, I mean, you could do like the dry brush effect, so don't put any water in. I'll kind of show you. And I just have, I just have black and my brush was dry and I can go in, you know, and, but the only problem, no, not problem, um, but the only, you know, the only thing about that is it's not going to. There's a specific look that a palette knife gives, and if you're using a brush, it just doesn't give that same technique, if that makes sense. Um, so yes, absolutely, you can, you can do that. Just know that it's not going to look exactly the same, if that makes sense. Um, I would suggest just playing with the palette knife more. Um, the long, the long ones that I go into is just by I have, I have paint on my on my palette or my palette knife, and I'll just go and I'll just pull it all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. You can just even put. You can, instead of using the side, just put it on the tip. And let's see, where do I put this? Right here, okay? I'm gonna just gently touch, and I'm just gonna drag it. See that? I'm just dragging it. I'm gonna pull a couple up a little bit. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, you can spend as much time as you want on this section and I'm just remembering <laughs> that I didn't paint the bottom I didn't paint the bottom of the y'all this is the life <laughs> so I'm just gonna go in let's see all my all my brown colors are all my brown colors are gone okay I'm gonna go in just with where's my brown just a little bit of brown I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit Oops, that was a lot of brown. I just put a lot of brown. Let's see, can I can I put that back? No, that's not going back. Well, I just wasted brown, and that's okay. Um, what I was gonna say, I'm just gonna go in with some of this brown and paint the bottom of this because I completely spaced and forgot. And you know, sometimes I do it too. All right, so we are coming to an end of our class. If you are still painting, by all means, continue painting until your heart's desire. But I want, at, at some point, you do have to put it down and just be like, I'm done. It looks cute. It's amazing. And my teacher will be proud of me because I am proud of you for all being here, painting along with me, joining me on this journey. So, yeah. Um, this just goes to show you that even, even me painting the same thing, it looks completely different. I do think I'm going to go in just a little bit. It's kind of this like black. I'm going to break it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. So the last thing you need to do is get your small paintbrush and 
in whatever color you want, you could do, I would suggest if you want it to be seen, you can do a, the, either the, the off-white or like the, the yellow color or the white. Um, you could um, put your signature. So yeah, I did black for the first time and it was like over here and you couldn't really see it. I kind of did it on purpose, but I'm gonna do mine in this like yellow white color. You're welcome, Robin. Thank you for speaking up and asking because I'm sure it helped others too. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly do this. I'm sure my kids are done with their nap and they want out. <laughs> so. If you're painting this later, um, let me know in the comments below uh, whether or not you put your name or your initials or if you put the date on there. Um, let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, make sure to uh, like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. And yeah. See you in a couple weeks. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing in a couple weeks? Let's see. Uh, oh, ooh, I am so excited. We are doing. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's like a door with like it's like you know those like doors in France almost, or like kind of like the one in Mamma Mia where it's like a door. It's got a little pot next to it, plant, and it's got a tree of like flowers. It's really pretty. Um, go check it out. Go to my events, RCP, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.